Greetings, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. This video is about Trump and the ambassador, or should I say the erstwhile ambassador, Sir Kim Darroch. I think I pronounced it correctly, Darroch, not Darroch. Um, anyhow, I was planning to make this video and then events uh, ran ahead of me and I did, didn't make it by the time a decision was taken. Would he be ambassador? Would he not? Well, he's resigned. I think he rightly fell on his sword, though he's done nothing wrong. So Sir Kim Darroch was the consummate di diplomat, was a diplomat, but he's still in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. So he was the United Kingdom's ambassador to the United States and uh, managing his mood swings uh, was obviously arduous and, and wearisome. It is a skill that uh, various White House staffers have had to become adept in. Now, go back to Sir Henry Wooten, that 16th century Englishman who said, an ambassador is, a, is an honest man sent abroad to lie for the good of his country which is a um, classic uh, synopsis of what diplomacy is all about. And um, Darroch is, is no exception. Now, these tend not to be whoppers of lies, but there's obviously um, being at least tactful to someone's face and then uh, behind his back being completely frank about what that person's like. So um, Darroch, well, his duty was to pretend that he and uh, the British government in general likes and respects President Trump, um, which is, uh, well... It is it's, um, no easy task to pretend that you like someone as loathsome them as Trump. And uh, various diplomats, a former French diplomat, from, uh, have come out and saying, yeah, what Darroch said is absolutely on the money. We all think that. And many White House insiders think so too. Some of them have given off the record briefings, even published an anonymous article last year saying this. So, um, uh, yeah, Darroch, he was writing these diplomatic cables for the two and a half years of Trump's presidency, and suddenly they've all been published come on to just what he said and how it was published in a moment. So there has been the trademark choleric reaction from Trump for days. So it was the 6th of July when um, all this came out in the wash and yeah, predictably the solids hit the fan. So Trump was soon um, lashing out in the Twitter sphere, um, which is the standard means of communication for the White House these days, uh, completely novel. Um, so. It took on the 10th of July until um, uh, Sir Kim Darroch resigned. So it was leaked. To whom? Well, Isabel Oakshot, a pro-UKIP journalist. Now, as some will see it, she is the sewer of choice for um, uh, hard right dialogue. Being in favour of Brexit is not necessarily a right-wing thing. You can be a left-wing person. You can be centrist. But um, she describes herself as a small-c conservative. And she is notorious for having uh, co-authored Call Me Dave, published by her and Lord Ash Ashcroft. Ashcroft, former uh, treasurer of the Conservative Party, was deeply dissatisfied the direction the Conservative Party was taking under David Cameron. Just after David Cameron became Prime Minister, Call Me Dave was published, in which Isabel Oakeshott included this salacious claim that, um, that David Cameron, whilst an undergraduate at Oxford, had put his penis in the, the mouth of a dead pig. Yeah, you heard that correct, in the mouth of a dead swine. It was a severed head, presumably. Well, I don't know about the whole body. Part of the Pierce Gavison Society, which really does exist and really does get up to various frolicsome shenanigans. Um, whether he did that, I mean, we have no idea. It's not very credible. But it was the most eye-catching claim, and some people say that seriously undermines her credibility. And Miss Oakshot later herself admitted she was relying on a single source of uh, dubious reliability. So um, the ambassador's communications back to his capital are going to be completely candid. All right, if an ambassador's worth his salt, he's going to tell the unvarnished truth. So um, uh, anyway, nobody supposes you can you can quibble with the, the central claim of this uh, of this uh, series of messages. And one of them is that Trump radiates insecurity. Well, it's a drone strike of a phrase uh, and it's obviously clearly needled Trump, which is why he reacted um, so furiously. So um, Trump has done everything possible since to, to vindicate that assessment of his personality, reacting with um, anger and spite, just so intemperate, seething for days. Um, so uh, I noticed that Trump hasn't even attempted to refute any of the substance of what is said. Even a man as dishonest as Trump can't take issue with that. What he's come out with with broadsides against Theresa May and the UK's Brexit policy and things like that. Um, so as if more proof were needed, he's provided a superabundance of evidence that he is deeply insecure, which is why he reacts with such ire to the mildest criticisms, to well-grounded uh, criticisms. So it's been a characteristically 
um, foolish and childish reaction, what would a real statesman do? Ignore it. Rise above it. Don't give the story's legs. Move on and do something. Carry on with your duties. That's what, say, politicians elsewhere do. That's what, say, the British royal family would do. Anyway, the message is also vouchsafed that President Trump was, was elated by the uh, very warm welcome he received in the United Kingdom and everyone treated it with cordiality. So it was a state visit that was freighted with pageantry and circumstance, just uh, the kind of thing to appeal to someone of Trump's uh, spectacular pomposity. Um, and uh, there's only one country in the world which hails its head of state with the splendour and fanfare that Trump considers no more than his due, uh, which is why he really likes to um, be um, uh, on, on a level footing with Her Majesty the Queen. So anyway, uh, Trump is clearly highly unstable. He's chaotic. He's incoherent. His administration is like that. Um, it's riven by factionalism, as Darroch said. It was saying that the, the, the administration was all over the shop on, on, on policy. Um, Trump is completely immature and irascible. Um, he's uh, recalcitrant on various themes. He's just snarling and so wrathful. Um, and some of the fascinating insights, well, simply verified what, what was widely believed already, that Trump is exceptionally torpid and um, spends a few hours every evening on the phone to his cronies, people like Sean Hannity, not taking expert advice, but really listening to, to um, uh, his Fox News media gurus. Well, Fox is now, of course, the semi-official channel of the Trump organization. Um, not just the Trump administration, but his company. Uh, anyway, so things had to be spelt out to, to Trump in words of a syllable, as Sir Kim said, because Trump is such a simpleton that you have to make things um, completely plain for him. He cannot infer things. You cannot put it delicately because he won't get it. And so what, what the British diplomats say behind doors is what they really think. They're not dressing it up, trying to make it alluring, trying to soften it, telling it the way it is. And Trump is someone who shoots from the lip. You think he would appreciate such, such, such frankness. Ooh, but no such thing. Here he is, just simply exploded at uh, the truth being told. So this was very wounding to a man of Trump's raging vanity. And why is um, he so hopping mad? Um, with this synopsis of his presidency? Well, it's because this analysis of this presidency and summary of his personality is absolutely accurate. And that's what really gets him about it, is that it's just correct. So who leaked? They say roughly 100 people would have seen it. Um, diplomats, maybe some top politicians, you know, Foreign Secretary, obviously. I don't think Jeremy Hunt's leaked it, but, you know, Minister of State just below him. He's a Secretary of State. Um, so there's a hue and cry. They've got to find this person. Who is the mole? Or should I say the rat? So they have to ferret out the rodent. So, and also this is a breach of the Official Secrets Act. So someone can be prosecuted. People are sent to prison for this. Uh, now, it's only been about two years. It's not sort of militarily sensitive information in time of war or something like that. So um, would it be an extreme remainder? Well, any investigation, first of all, asks qui bono? Who benefits? Who would have a motive? What is the motive? Now, it could be that you wanted to wreck um, Sir Kim's career. Well, he's only got a few months left in Washington anyway, or did have. So want to end that early. Create a vacancy, which you can then fill with someone more amenable to your worldview. It could be anti-Brexiteers. And let's face it, the civil servants and foreign office is full of them because they come from usually upper middle class backgrounds. They're, they're highly educated. They overwhelmingly live um, in and around London. These are some of the most pro-Remain areas. They're of a quite, quite a high income. Often they've studied in various EU institutions and they've just been indoctrinated into EU thinking. There are good Europhile arguments, but I'm just saying there are various reasons to think a high majority of them are Remainers. Fair enough. You can be a Remainer and a completely fair-minded and honest person and do your job um, in a... In a um, objective manner, even-handed manner. So I wouldn't say that most Remainers are doing this. It would only take one to do it. Or are they saying, is it a hard-lined lever? I'm not sure quite how this plays into lever's hands. But then again, Isabel Oakshot is the one who leaked it. But is this simply a way of covering your, your, your trail by giving it to someone who's known to be a bullhorn for Brexit? Um, so uh, anyway, so someone who would like to undermine the special relationship what are the consequences of this? People are thinking, oh, well, the United Kingdom has such a warm relationship with the United States um, and leaving the European Union, negotiate a good trade deal. But if you can scupper that by um, driving uh, Trump uh, mad. So now he's so uh, furious. He's on the warpath. He's not going to do that. Um, 
So one would try to make these communications impregnable, but people are seeing it on their desk in London, taking a photo of the screen, simply writing it down, because mobile phones and emails can be searched, but if you just handwrite it on paper, so long as it's accurate, that's that. The one thing you've got to persuade this journalist, Isabel Oakeshott, what you're publishing is true, you haven't just made up, or at the very least embellished. So um, it's actually redolent of what, uh, what um, happened over WikiLeaks, US cables. Remember 2010, tens of thousands of US cables were, were, were published, uh, which was obviously um, deeply embarrassing for the United States. Um, but that didn't queer the pitch for their relations with other countries for a long time. Uh, some of it was actually quite reassuring that the United States um, pressed people in private, raised human rights concerns and so forth. So um, uh, Trump said that Sir Kim was a pompous fool. Well, is Trump looking in the mirror? Self and its projection. There is no perfect, more perfect example of a pompous fool than Trump. Uh, and it seems to be the standard insult for upper class British people or British people in high positions like ambassadors. There is some pomposity amongst Britons, yeah, including amongst those who are ambassadors and so forth. And there is, of course, foolishness in the British population. I don't know that the British are unusually pompous or have more fools than it would be our fair share. But um, so I thought it showed a total lack of imagination on Trump's behalf to say that. Surprise, surprise. So he's going to show his um, anger at undiplomatic language by indulging in the very same. Well, that's Trump really raising the tone, really being presidential and showing the decorum of his office, hey? So uh, Trump has not one whit of self-awareness. You know, as I say, pompous fool is the perfect encapsulation of Trump himself. Um, but pomposity, though, would, would suggest a certain degree of gravitas and intelligence that perhaps I shouldn't cr credit Trump with having. But maybe, but maybe pompous fool is, is uh, flattering to him. So he says that he said that the British ambassador was foisted on the United States. Uh, the United States accepted him. You accept his credentials. You could say no. You could say we don't want him. We want her or whatever. And you can request that ambassadors be withdrawn eventually. You can simply declare them persona non grata, kick them out. Would Trump have done that? Would Push have come to shove? I suspect not, even for Trump. But, you know, um, we will not deal with him again. It was the royal we from Donald Trump. Trump personally or the administration? I don't know. So US ambassadors do exactly the same. They write these poison pen portraits about foreign politicians. Um, not because they're spiteful, but just because um, they're telling um, the ugly truth sometimes and people to need to know what the situation is don't try and make it look attractive give it to me straight but uh, once again trump has been completely infantile he proved just how thin skin he was i remember sean hannity of fox news railing against obama saying that he was thin-skinned i didn't see any evidence of that at all actually but trump is hypersensitive to slights well he's so touchy i suppose because he knows all this is true um anyway and look at his uh breaches of diplomatic protocol continuously interfering in domestic British politics, um, saying that uh, this is how you should do Brexit and you should elect uh, Boris Johnson and things like that, which has been a bit of a kiss of death for Boris Johnson. Um, and, you know, Trump has been publicly scathing about Theresa May before he even landed in the United Kingdom for a state visit. Trump was already on Twitter um, insulting the mayor of London and um, uh, belittling Sadiq Khan because of his height. This is the language of the playground, sneering at someone because of their stature, he can't do any better than that. I mean, it's obviously, it's loathsome. It's shameful. Anyway, so um, we know that a private reason critique of, of Trump, a private one, when it becomes public, or uh, makes him throw the toys out of the pram. So yet again, proving what Sir Kim was saying all along. So I thought that, that Sir, Sir Kim should be replaced sooner. Not that he's done anything wrong. He's done his job as he should do. Uh, the problem is that somebody leaked it and his position was just untenable. Um, so I thought that May wouldn't uh, dismiss him, and indeed she didn't. Stand by your man, he did his duty, not in the Tammy Wynette sense. And Marisa, Theresa May's only got about a fortnight to go as Prime Minister. Downing Street and, and, and the Foreign and Commonwealth Secretary Jeremy Hunt said that they both disagree with the assessment, um, which I very much doubt that they do. Um, but this mitigation that proffered by them did uh, not much... Um, it didn't amount to much, and it didn't really uh, undo the damage. They've also apologised for what was said. But uh, I think Darroch's position was unsustainable through no fault of his own, as I said. So he can easily be found another job in the Foreign Commonwealth Office. He had not much longer to go to retirement out of that anyway. So he is no longer a channel of communication. He was a barrier to it. So that's why he was right to do the public service and stand down early. And notably, before he even announced that, he was left out of a meeting with Ivanka Trump, uh, part Trump trying to make her the next dynast. His sons are obviously such morons that even someone as sexist as Trump favours his daughter over them. 
Um, so uh, Ivanka Trump was meeting um, Liam uh, Fox. Dr. Fox is the United Kingdom's trade secretary. So I noticed after 2010, no American diplomats were, were dismissed for what they'd said in these uh, private communications, nor should they have been, as they had performed their duty to the highest possible standard. It's just they'd been hacked later on. So um, Bojo will become prime minister. It's, it's a race, racing certainty now. Uh, it's shown that, that many Conservative Party members have already voted. Remember, it's a postal vote, and now a result to be announced 23rd of, of July. And 72% said they voted for Boris Johnson, so he's going to win very handily. Um, so had he been prime minister and Darroch was still there, I'm sure Bojo would have, would have dismissed him, and Bojo wouldn't guarantee otherwise. Um, Jeremy Hunt honourably spoke up for Sir Kim, um, and this is, uh, this is obviously counted against Bojo, but nowhere near enough to d deprive him of the prime ministership. So ambassadors are not supposed to enliven things with their um, indiscretions, and there was no indiscretion on behalf of Sir Kim. And, but on the other hand, Trump has proved yet again that he is unfit for command. He takes things personally all the time, rather than thinking about the United States, conflating himself with the United States. I feel insulted. Well, we still have a relationship with the United Kingdom. We need to keep going. So I'm not going to be too hurt by that. He's totally egocentric. Um, he does no objectivity and uh, veracity is not a strong point for him. Uh, he's just always so volatile. Um, so Trump conjures up images of Henry VIII or some acidulous absolute monarch who um, is um, raging about any perceived uh, slight. Trump, he sometimes puts me in, in mind of an Asiatic tin pot tyrant like Kim Jong-un and Xi Jinping, the type over whom he gushes so much. And contrast the fulsome praise for them with um, his constant scorn and sneering for the leaders of democratic countries, those who actually permit criticism, insult, ridicule of themselves, such as in Canada, France, um, the United Kingdom, Germany, and so on. Trump has nothing but disdain for them because they respect a free press and because they don't urge that journalists be beaten up and things like that. You know, when there's Trump urging that journalists be beaten up, protesters be beaten up, calling them the, the enemies of the people. Enemies of the people are executed, by the way. That's You're saying they're traitors urging the police to, 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 not, to not be too gentle with suspects, as in to beat them up. But when, obviously, the FBI, they lawfully execute a uh, research warrant, someone like Michael Cohen, doing things entirely ethically, Trump um, reacts with rage to that, again, accusing them of being illegal and so on. Well, it baffles me how at least 40% of Americans still support this sick, vile fiend. Um, anyway, the resumption of good relations uh, is important to the United Kingdom, particularly in, in light of Brexit being supposedly only three months away. So Bojo will help because he butters up Trump. We might have Trump eating out of his hand. Will that lead to a favourable trade deal? That's questionable. As I say, I, I don't think Brexit's going to happen. Uh, if it does, it won't be a proper Brexit anyway, much though I would like a proper Brexit that, with a reasonable deal. So um, Trump would like to be lauded to a extent commensurate with his own ludicrous delusions of might, of intellect and achievement. This man who constantly says that he's, he's um, you know, uh, a genius, that he's made billions of dollars when he's in fact lost billions of dollars, uh, or that he could have risen to the top of the military, that he would have gone in to confront a high school shooter even if he didn't have a weapon, and on and on and on. Trump thinks of himself as a superhero. So there we are. Um, we are in the grip of... Um, this malignant narcissist who, uh, shockingly, is the most powerful man in the world. You, you would have thought that the office would make the man or that he would grow into it, something like that. Or he, his insecurities would finally be laid to rest by being um, honoured so much because of his office. But, oh, no, not a bit of it. If anything, it might have even actually deepened his insecurities. Well, it's astonishing. I mean, every day is, is a surprise and a shock with Donald Trump. We never know where he's going to turn next. Um, all right, so that's enough about Donald Trump. Uh, please don't leak again, people in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office.